on this crossover episode of the NES Pursuit. Oh, fake yawn. I'm so tired. Oh, fake yawn. Riff and NES Complex have landed in the land of gators in pursuit of retro gold. Ricky! The boys discover new treasures as they come face to face with the wonderful world of Japanese games. And I'm like, ah, that's good. That is a huge discount, a huge discount. Things get shady when Jay from the Game Chasers joins the pursuit. And the description will be like mature audiences only. How well do Florida gamers know their video games? Oh, this man. one tricks a lot of Yeah, it screwed me up. The hybrid game hunting crew dives into some of the most radical junk on the Emerald Coast. Like this might be kind of weird, but where was Ted Bundy actually apprehended? <laughs> Grab a pina colada and get ready for pant comparisons, a relaxing complex, purple hair, and some fantastic foreign finds. This is the NES Pursuit. completely different where we've never been ever. Me and NES Complex, we're in Florida. I'm sitting in a blue chair because it's Florida and there are blue chairs in Florida. There's a guy yelling over there in Florida. Florida is awesome. There's beaches, there's waterfalls, there's pool fronts. The place we're staying at here for Emerald Coast Con is right on the beach and this feels fantastic. So we, we come out of our room and we're just kind of looking to the side. Oh my gosh. Right there, it's the water. I mean, it's kind of weird that I'm excited about this because that's kind of how it is in California too, but this is different water. Different beach and different water. And I've never seen this different water. Anytime I see sand and ocean, my shirt comes off and I go to the beach and I lay out and I hang out and I swim. That's what I do, so I might have to set aside like two hours today. Grandma's at the dunes, what do you think? Welcome to Florida. It's a nice day. I'm not gonna say that Riff it okay, I'm gonna say Riff is weird. I forgot hair product. I know that sounds silly, but for me it's actually kind of important, so I'm like, I need hair product. What do I do, Chris? He wears tight pants, he he wears lots of loose fitting tops. Yeah, I'm calling them tops. Well we go, we walk to a convenience store, and I look, and I look, and I look, and there's no hair, hair product spray. anywhere. I need something. Anything. He's pretty like fond of his hair. And the only thing I see, well, is some surf wax. And so he tries to buy some wax, some surfboard wax, because he doesn't have any hairspray. I try. I, I don't have hair product, and I need hair product. I put it in my hair. It looks worse. Oh my gosh. And it crumbles. And it looks terrible. It almost rips up my hair. But it doesn't work in his hair, and it leaves all this weird little white bits. Oh my gosh, it just crumbles. Look at that, it looks like I have lice. And that's when I realized, he's not Riff, he's Danned Riff. My beautiful hair! Thank <laughs> God somebody had hairspray that I can borrow. These are important things for someone like me. Like complete. You like it? Ricky! So after we get ready, we head up to this event, the Emerald Coast Con. And this place has arcades, they have some games, they have a lot of cosplay. So we go on the vendor floor, there's some, of course, there's some games, there's a, you know, crafts and arts, so we're doing body painting, and they have a lot of community. And something we notice right away is they definitely have a tight community family feel. But the good thing is, sometimes when you go to things like this, you might think, there's too close of a community, we're not gonna be welcomed in but we felt welcomed in right away. Everyone was super loving to us and treated us like we've been here before and we're a part of the crew already. So we loved it. Ricky! When you walk 
walk around an expo or a convention, you know, if you've done this, you walk around and you see booths and you see different things, but you know when you see your booth. And what I mean by that is there'll be a booth sometimes that catches your attention. You're like, this this is the booth I'm supposed to be at. There's something here for me. And mine, this, this booth is speaking to me. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't know what yet. So the booth for us is JCAT Games and Collectibles. This booth was speaking to me, which is interesting because this booth was filled with Japanese stuff, and I love Japanese stuff, but I don't have any Japanese stuff. They, they just had so many unique things. You know, we're always looking for trinkets and and collectibles like that. And so their booth really stood out to us. And right away I'm looking around, the people are awesome, they're really nice, the two people that run this booth. And I see this super cool box, this case for a Super Famicom. If you've been watching the show, you know that I love cases lately. So this case is speaking to me a little bit more than I was expecting it to. I, I don't know, how much does a Super Famicom go for these days around? And so, of course, Riff had his eye on, on the Super Famicom case because he likes cases and he's weird about cases. It's kind of weird that he likes cases so much. Yeah, it's like a rant, one of those it's, things. It's kind of hard, yeah. That's a, um, but I see a price on it for $120. But yeah, I, I just don't see that. Uh, that that's the Yoshis, the one with the Yoshis, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's kind of a bit rare. But as we start talking to these people, as we said, the community here is strong. Okay. But you guys tell me, only if you're comfortable. That's my um, only walkway, if you're comfortable. I asked them, what is the lowest you can go on this? If you do 40, oh, really? take, take the Super Famicom with you. No way. Yeah. With that said, they say, okay, take 40 for the case and the Super Famicom inside. And then I'm going to give you 50. Um, well. <laughs> I want to give you 50 I'm gonna take, if I'm going to take the Super Famicom with it. And I'm like, no, 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 let me give you 50. Please, at least let me give you 50. Oh, well, if you're going to do 50, you take a game then. So. <laughs> this and a game. And then they say, why don't you take the Super Famicom, the Super Famicom case, and Bonks, which came out in 1994 for the Super Famicom, a fantastic game. Wait, I've made some friends already. Yeah, See, this is the good. This is her store, by the way. I'm just All of it for 50 bucks. And they got too much stuff I like. If we lived closer, I'd take these bigger items and the Mario board game down there. But and, and they, it's not like a thing with the show or anything. And they felt like they owed it to us because these people didn't know the show. Now they do. We, we they watched it. I think they watched it. They said they watched it. You watched it, right? You're watching this. I have rheumatoid arthritis, and that's why I use Negeftithol. <gasps> Silencio, por favor! And then after he does his deal, I'm like, that was a really freaking good deal. Oh my gosh. I'm like, like that kind of good deal. I'm like, I need to see if they've got some things that I'm interested in. So what I'm looking at is these lovely disc system, Famicom, Famicom? What am I? Famicom disc system games. They had some disc games. Famicom disk drive stuff. I don't have any of these. And they're beautiful. And they deserve a place on my shelf. Disc, Zelda one, I've always wanted to have one of these. I love the way that the word Nintendo is all like, like embossed or, em is it embossed when it goes down? I don't know, it's in there. At least this one for sure. I'm really interested in this one. And it just looks really cool. And these things were perfect, immaculate, clean. He was telling us in Japan, everything has to be like that. Like, people are very, very picky. They're very much like me. In fact, I think I might be Japanese. They actually have the stickers booklet. for the... Uh, oh, wow. So if you want it complete, it has to have the stickers. Right. So if you go on eBay, you'll see it still has stickers. So um. So I'm looking at this, and I, I just want Zelda 1. And, I'm, and, he, and it was marked 50 bucks. I'm like, all right, well, what will you do? And he comes back and he says... Um, 35. Uh, it's a little cheaper price than I guess everything on eBay and I tested I actually tested these because I remember uh, popping these in He's like but if you want Zelda 2 also I'll give it to you for 50 but I'll do both of these for uh, 50 for you and I'm thinking oh man I, I don't know if I want both because I really just wanted the novelty of having one of those in my collection I'd like to get just this one. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, I think I just want to get this one. He's like, well, I'll do 40 for both. All right, well, how about 40, though? You just take 40 for both? Yeah. And I'm like, forget it. Of course I'm going to do that. I would be a fool not to do 40 for both. Yeah. I will definitely do that. Okay. 
Sounds wow. good. Thank you. Thank you so much. So I got Zelda 1 and what they call the Legend of Zelda 2 and then some Japanese words that I don't know what exactly they mean. Link's Adventure probably. It was awesome. Zelda. And now they're in my collection. In my games rooms. In our games rooms. Ricky! You don't want to know what Ricky will do to you. Using product design for hair is probably better than product design for surfboard. <laughs> Coming up, Complex and Riff combine forces with Jay from the Game Chasers. And later, it's time to discover some radical junk. So this whole time as we're flying in, we're like, we're, we're gonna meet up with Jay and he's texting and we're, we're writing back and he's like, where are you? He didn't say it in quite those terms, but you know, he said, where are you? And so we see him, and he's like off in the distance and we're creeping up on him and I sneak up from behind. There's a wild Jay in his native habitat. And I just give him a big, big warm hug because I love Jay. Jay, always, since the day I met him, Jay is just, uh, he's just a lovable, friendly, wonderful dude. But, we meet up, not for games, for the great debate to be, to be settled. To settle once and for all, although I don't know if it will ever settle once and for all. in and out versus Whataburger. Uh, this young man has not had it yet. He's saying it is a burger, but I'm thinking, what? A burger? Maybe not a burger. Maybe it's going to be called not a burger. So the guys came to Whataburger with me. Um, they actually have it out here in Florida, believe it or not. It's in, it's in a few states, not just a Texas thing. And I've never had Whataburger. I'd been told that it was maybe a little watery and maybe not such a, like, maybe not that flavorful. And you know, I love In-N-Out. I grew up with In-N-Out. Like literally a mile from my house there was In-N-Out. We went there all the time. It's not like I won't eat In-N-Out. It's just not, I'm not like, oh, I need a burger. Let's go to In-N-Out. So keto style, which means I got to eat it with a fork and a knife like a freak. <laughs> you know. <laughs> like a freak. <laughs> yeah. Chris tries his first. I got it. And I took a bite. And what everyone told me, me. All right. Oh my gosh. It was really good. That meat had good flavor. It was salty, it was greasy. I like keto. It was greasy and salty. I, I'm actually not, I'm impressed. It's not bad. I'll take that. I'll take, you don't have I, to say it's the best fast food burger in the world. I would eat here, for sure. Okay. If there was one I, in I California, that. I would eat here. That, that's a win for me, I accept that. So Aeneas Complex liked it. He actually genuinely liked the burger and I'm really glad. It's good. That's all I wanted. That's perfect, that's all and I And that's pretty much all I can ask for is greasy, salty, nutrients packed in a cow ground up in the meat grinder and formed into a patty shape and grilled on a grill with lots of cheese and grease. And I'm actually glad Riff was there. He tried it again. He has had it before. He said he didn't like it. I think it was just a bad cook that day or something. And he was like, wait a minute. I think I was wrong. Is it better the second time? It's better than I remember. Okay, good. You know what? I have to admit, it's better than I remembered. Well, I don't know if they make it better in Florida. Sorry, Texas. I almost got a little bit of a Five Guys taste when I first bit into this right now. Just now? Yeah. That's a, that's a compliment in my opinion. So it's really nice that two, two in and out um, fanboys can appreciate something from another culture. I would say, I still like In-N-Out better. You're not gonna beat me there, but this is way better than I remember. I'm not gonna say it. They're not better than In-N-Out. They're good. Let's prove us wrong. Prove us wrong. They won't prove us wrong because there's no better burger than In-N-Out that's fast food. So take that, rewind it back, and he has pursued, got the beat that make your booty go smack. I don't know. I just say things. 
<laughs> hey, I'm, I'm naked out here in a towel. <laughs> Later that evening, it's time to do our panel. And we are doing a zoomed in panel challenge where we zoom into a video game nice and tight and you have to guess what it is. And if you guess, you get some prizes. We're walking to our panel now. We have three panels this weekend. So it's gonna be fun. It's really loud out here, but it's beautiful. Like Ricky. Where's Ricky? I need Ricky. Its skin is not soft. And we had a blast doing this. We wanted to make sure that our panel spoke to people who didn't have to be a fan of the show or know the show. You could come and just enjoy. And we had a lot of people there. Oh, man. All right. Woo! Nice job. So we had a massive line of people. It was so, it was awesome. They, they had a lot of fun. There, there's just a lot, everyone playing along. And we asked everybody their names, what kind of games they play. This was team community building. We feel like we've been initiated in the Floridas. We're the Florida, Florida Floridas. <laughs> That's what they called us up there. Not one person called us that, but we can say they did. Ricky! Doesn't have soft skin. You're at an expo. It's late at night. If you've been to an expo, you know how you end the evening. Hanging out, playing video games at the arcades because these things are always open late. And this was no different. Right after this break, Jay, Chris, and Riff dive into a gaming store with a plethora of retro gaming goodies. It's the next morning in Florida. We wake up in the hotel, it's time to rise and shine. Oh, uh, fake yawn, I'm so tired. Oh, fake yawn. Oh, I can't wait to, for this day to start. We get ready, we go on with the day, I test out my Super Famicom. All right, it is time to test. If this works, it's all set up, ready to go. But let's test it, all right. All right, here we go. We have a picture. Actually, I think Riff's a little more squirrely. God, I don't want to call you Riff. It works! Look at it! Bonks in Japanese! We came to Florida to buy Japanese games! And also, I didn't, I didn't realize. Two arm planks? That's not gonna work. This thing ends up working perfectly, but now it's time to head over to Rad Junk with Jay, with Chris, with Sam, and with Joe, just to kind of check out the store. We're not really looking to buy too much stuff, just hang out, check out a local store, and then head home. So we kind of got treated like VIPs, I guess that's a thing when you're a YouTuber, and we got to go to Rad Junk before the store opened up and kind of have free reign of the place. Uh, so it was really cool of Joe and Sam to do that. We see a lot of different names for shops, but you know what sums it up simply and beautifully? Rad Junk, because that's what we like. We like going through all these little things and finding knickknacks and collectibles. It's, as some people call it junk, a lot of people call it junk. To us, we call it treasure. We started off at cons. 
had a lot of stuff, and here we are. So we get to Rad Junk, and I love stores like this that has stuff everywhere. And yeah, Sam, who runs the store, was a little bit like, guys, we're running a convention. We just did a convention this weekend. There's kind of stuff everywhere. We're like, no, no, no. This is what we love. We're game hunters. We're game collectors. I guess we're game chasers, because Jay's here. It's a thing. Texas. So we are looking around. There's stuff everywhere. There's knickknacks. There's video games. Then Joe's like, hey, I got a back area for you guys to check out. Do you want to see the most terrifying thing you will ever see? Oh, I'm not a mirror. There's about 400 dance mats. No! <laughs> the bottom of the barrel of gaming. He takes us to the back. He starts showing us some random little rooms and random little things that are in the back of the store. So, what I need to know already, <laughs> I just picked up a Super Famicom today, but he shows me this beautiful, I just got a Super Famicom, so he has this beautiful Super Famicom hotel kit that I knew nothing about, but man. So this is a hotel unit from Japan. You would pay yen to play Famicom games or Super Famicom games, and there's these PCBs in there that have like dual games on each one, so like Donkey Kong Country and Mario Kart, or Bomberman and Mario Kart, or whatever. I wanted that thing. I didn't have the money or the space to get this thing. Man, it was it was beautiful. It's a beautiful, beautiful piece. Yeah. Actually, you do, you ha do you have Super Famicom games in here at yeah. all? I think we have a few. Game changers are pretty lame. Um, okay, so I got a question, and I'm not even gonna start with, like, this might be kind of weird, but where was Ted Bundy actually apprehended? Police are searching for a possible serial killer. Something that's really catching my eye and I'm kind of thinking about is the Super Famicom stuff because I just picked one up. And not really knowing anything about Super Famicom games, I can't really branch out too far and risk getting certain games that I might not even know how to play at all. Um, it's kind of a platformer, but also you have to do puzzles. So if you can't read Japanese, it's... But something I figure that I can play easy is because these games are also American games and they're pick up and play regardless, is the Bomberman games. And they had Super Bomberman 2. Since I got a Super Famicom this weekend, I'm gonna start out with Super Bomberman 2 because I feel like this is something I'll actually be able to play without needing any sort of translation. So I grabbed that game, but then right behind me is a different color box of a Sega Master System game. And then back there, a game that I haven't seen in like forever, even though I've been looking at Sega Master System stuff everywhere. And this game is Cyborg Hunter. Cyborg Hunter. And I'm not gonna say that it's good because it's kind of not. This is one of those games that I remember playing but don't really remember too much about it. And it's weird, it's an action game that's side-scrolling but like the top of the half of the screen is, screen is almost like a dungeon maze. There's some action elements and there's also some RPG dungeon crawling-esque elements as well in the game. But uh, what'd you say? So I picked this game up as well. I need it in my collection, Sega Master System. It's, it's accruing fast. Hi. <laughs> you want to go? Yeah. You want to make out? Oh my <laughs> gosh. <laughs> Wow, boxy. So I'm looking at the normal rows of games and I'm not really seeing anything that I need or want right now, but I do see in the back, there's some like shelves and tables and just boxes with stuff in it uh, that's not really out for display. You want it? I do want it. This is awesome. So the first thing in this sort of back table area that catches my eye is this, actually I think Riff showed me to begin with, it's a, it was a collection of Nintendo comics, but it was hard bound. Like, this is really cool. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I find this thing and I'm looking through it. This is really cool. Like, what, what is this going to cost? So I'm like, uh, Joe, Joe, how much is this? That can be yours for a hug. After thinking it over and checking me out, a hug. Only a hug? I didn't have to trade a burrito. A hug? Beat that, Ricky. Yeah, that is the best deal I've ever got. I mean, if that's all it takes, I'm gonna start hugging every vendor. I'm gonna start hugging every shop owner. Forget the burrito approach. That didn't work, that failed me. 
Oh, this is the best hug I've had Dude, all weekend. it is a really good hug. Sorry, Jay. His is better. NES Pursuit is the Disney version of Game Chasers. And I understand what they mean by that because me and Billy were pretty, uh, we're pretty raw. I mean, I'll say about that. <laughs> <laughs> what else can you ask for? Ooh, good. These are nice pants, perfectly cut, precision cuts, right here, nice area, nice grooves. Everything fits nice, too. Okay, audience, decide which pants are better. I heard. Yeah. It's fun. <laughs> Yeah. Stressful. No, I'm just kidding. I end up seeing these tables with random stuff just lying around, and for me, that's kind of the stuff I love. And I see all these books and booklets and comics, and these aren't really the kind of comics that I normally skip over. I'm not a big comic book guy, but it's the Adventures of Mario Bros. and some Game Boy-looking comics. All right, so I don't. I have no idea what these are going for. No idea. Zero clue. I just know they're awesome. These are Super Mario Adventures or Adventures of Super Mario comics. But this one, I don't I don't know. Old, nostalgic comments, and these things are calling to me. I feel them. I'm like, oh, this is what I love. This is display. When I like to display stuff on the wall in different places in the game room, this is the kind of stuff I want. So I'm like, I don't know what these go for. I'll be honest with you. I don't, I don't know how much are these. No idea. Tell me. A wise purple hair. Sometimes I go to conventions and places have these listed at like 15, 20 bucks each. Purple they fit in the box. Hair, do, 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 do. Purple hair. Do, do, do. I picked up five of them and I'm like, hey, Joe Sam, how much? How much, oh, oh, wise purple hair? We call her Sam with the hair. I would prefer you to say first then. Well, I don't know what I'm, what are you going to say? But she's looking at the comics and Joe's looking at the comics and they come back with five bucks for all of them. Five dollars. Okay. I, I had, I am accepting it no matter what. I get it. Jay, what do you think about five dollars for all that? You paid the five dollars, uh, Absolutely. <laughs> I, I, they, they wanted to give a good deal. I'm taking the good deal. Oh my gosh, I'm excited to display them. There's a semi coming, so I gotta talk even louder. Thank you. Oh, wise purple. Thank you. Well, see you later. You got, you got noodle arms. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I like freaking SpongeBob. Hey! I do. <laughs> All right. Now, Jay guy's okay, but Billy, I mean, he just, he's, he's, he sucks. Horrible human being. Castlevania. <laughs> I've always wanted to be Billy, just not a giant. <laughs> but this is rad junk. It's a really cool store. And I don't, I have no idea about these at all. And I see these like just Japanese, again, there's some comics, there's these cool, really cool little, I think they're guidebooks, I don't read Japanese, but I think they're guidebooks with like really interesting art, things that weren't released over in the States. And I'm like, well, how much are these? A dollar each. Two dollars. What? What? Seriously? For these little books? I don't know what they're worth. Maybe in Japan they sell for two dollars, I don't know. You know that hug? That hug is taking on new meaning. I, I want to hug him again. Oh man, they're just super cool with Punch Out and Metroid. I mean, you can't get much cooler than that. Just for the art alone, I love them. On the Disney version, we just say things like hug and <laughs> happy and be friends. I didn't know you but were filming. My bad. I'm... The game chasers, they, they take things to different levels. Yep. That, I think that's a good word for us, right? We're pretty raw. <laughs> and the description will be like mature audiences only. Whoa, game. Uh. I knew I needed to acquire it. Unfortunately, I didn't buy a lot because the truth is I have so much stuff I could open a store that size, so it's really hard for me to find anything. Um, I was telling the guys earlier on, on this trip that I don't really get excited about games anymore because I can't find them. I get excited about stuff. Probably if I was gonna put it on the shelf, it'd be like two bucks. All right, like, deal. And one thing I do collect for is uh, cheat code books and strategy guides and stuff. So I found one, knew I had to have it. So, so look, here, here's the truth. Uh, I actually didn't pay for it. NES Complex uh, bought the book for me, it was $2. So, it was legit, thank you. But I, um, I like collecting cheat manuals and strategy guides and stuff like that, so. I love sunshine and I love mountains. And I love, I love steak. Ricky! Wait, I, 
did that face. Dang. Overall, our time in Florida was a beautiful feeling. We talked about how much we felt loved in this place, but something I want to make very clear is something me, NES Complex, and Jay talked about quite often with the cameras off is we really bonded. We've always been friends and we've always been good friends. You know when you add other people in the group, even if they're friends you love, you still don't get that level of connectivity you get when it's a small group. But me, Jay and Chris, we got to know each other in ways that we haven't gotten to in a while. And it was just a fantastic time. The way things just unfolded here, it was so family-like. Fun at the expo, had fun with all the people in Florida, wonderful time going to Rad Junk and digging through their stuff. So Florida, we're, we're coming for you. We're gonna come for you again. It felt very intimate and close. Uh, th the way we were able to talk and hang out with each other and with Jay and with, uh, with everyone who put on the show, with Joe and Sam and, and so many others. Where's Ricky? Where, where's Ricky? Where is Ricky? Have you seen Ricky? I'm, I love it too. Fortnite on. Oh, I'm taking this stuff back to Cali. I'm smuggling it. Make fun of me all you want. Some people call me Heron. I can't wait to come back. Ricky! Why, the, not just J, Game Chasers J, but J Cat Games and Collectibles. And that we came to Florida to get things from Japan. J, the letter J seems to be everywhere. It's like following us. Even Gabo will text ha 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 with J's instead of H's. Like, uh, ja ja ja? I caught him there. Very nice. Oh my goodness. <laughs> I would kiss Chris. Have I kissed Chris? Oh my God. He's filming it from the side. That's really weird. We hear a narration from there. But you know, he also said that his top burger place is McDonald's. He did say that. Yes. I'm not ashamed that I love McDonald's. Time to go off the show. And hopefully, I don't get a restraining order or any sort of charges pressed against me. They're doing it on purpose. They see us filming, and they're doing this to us. Stop it. Strike pose. <laughs> this is really close. <laughs> Welcome to the NES Pursuit. <laughs> Zoom again. Ha, ha, ha.